Hi everybody, it's Joy and Misa. Here we are and she's purring like crazy and all I have to say now is story time and she gets on the couch and starts purring. So I think she really loves this time with you guys and with me. Oh, I'm get, I think I'm scratching her on the neck in a good spot. Yeah. Oh yeah, can you hear her purring? I wonder if you can. Hey, it's Earth Day today. Happy Earth Day. Um, I'm going to be helping out actually cleaning up some litter in Melrose this week, tidying up my neighborhood around Cedar Park. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I signed right up for it. I thought that was a great thing to do while I have the time, especially now that I have a lot of time on my hands. I'm going to read you a story that was on one of my favorites when I was a little girl, um, and it has amazing illustrations. So I'm going to hold those up real close to you, okay, so you can see them. It is, oh, I just think you're going to love this book. And I, it might be one you have never heard before. That's what I'm hoping. Misa is really, I think she just saw herself on the video. That is so funny. Look, she's like, she's looking right at you guys. How funny. Okay. <laughs> Miss ja it's called Miss Jaster's Garden. And it's by N.M. Bodecker. And this is the cover. A beautiful house. And that is the woman. Miss Jaster. Okay, Misa, here we go. Some great illustrations. And on the opening page, there's actually a map. I'm going to take the cover off. There's a map of her neighborhood. Isn't that beautiful picture? I love maps. Have you ever drawn a map? That would be a good project for today. Draw a map of your neighborhood. I would love that. Email it to me. Have your grown-up take a picture and email it to me or text it to me. Because here is a map of Miss Jaster's neighborhood. Actually, that's not even a babe. That's not even her neighborhood. That's her garden. She's a gigantic garden. In a corner of a garden overlooking the sea at Sandgate lived a small spiky animal called a hedgehog. Hedgy for short. In the middle of the garden lived Miss Jaster in a villa pa, pa, a square whitewashed house with flower pots on the front steps. The two did not see much of each other, but occasionally they met, just after sunset, when they both enjoyed strolling in the garden. On these occasions, Miss Jaster would go back into the house for a saucer of milk, which she placed at what she hoped was the right end of the hedgehog. But, the, but hedgehogs, being the shape they are, and Miss Jaster being a little nearsighted, as often as not, she put the saucer where the hedgehog's head wasn't. And Hedgie, so as not to cause distress, politely dipped his tail in the milk and pretended to drink. Later, when Miss Jaster went into the house and lit the lamp on the piano, he drank the milk properly. Through the open door, he could hear Miss Jaster at the piano, her fingers fluttering up and down the keyboard, picking out little tunes as sweet as April showers. Hedgie liked being played for while he had his milk, and Miss Jaster enjoyed having someone to play for. This way, they lived happily for a while. So there's her garden, and there she is. Let me see if I can find Hedgie. Oh, yeah. So in each picture, what's really fun is you kind of have to search for Hedgie the Hedgehog. He's right there. And there's Miss Jester, and there's her house. There she is. And this is her house, and this is her gigantic garden. Then one bright May morning, when the air was soft and full, it, when, when the air was soft and full of bird song, Miss Jaster came into the garden to do her spring planting. She pulled behind her wagon full of garden tools and flower seeds. She carried a large green watering can with the letters J.J. J for Jessica Jaster, painted on it in blue. And because the sun was bright, she wore her dark glasses. These glasses made everything look brownish gray, the same color as the empty flower bed, and the same color as Hedgy, who was asleep in the middle of the flower bed. Miss Jaster combed the bed lightly with a rake. She sprinkled the seeds evenly, marigold and baby's breath and patches of sweet william she showered it all generously with her watering can never suspecting that a small spiky animal was in the middle of it at first hedgie thought of moving to a safer spot 
but his quills did need combing and he rather enjoyed having his back scratched. So he stayed. He hardly felt the seeds at all. They were like dust settling among his quills. As for the shower from the watering can, it was like a gentle rain, not at all unpleasant. So there's Miss Jaster walking to her garden with all of her garden tools. There is her watering can with JJ for Jessica Jaster. So think about if you had a watering can like this, what letters would be on your watering can? And here she is preparing the soil, but guess who's hiding in there? We're not really hiding, but she just doesn't see him. Hedgie's there. So she prepared the dirt, sprinkled the seeds, but guess what? Sprinkled some seeds on Hedgie and watered Hedgie, just like he was part of the garden bed. Oh dear, I wonder, he liked his back being scratched. I was thinking about that, like a rake. Oh, that would feel nice, I love having my back scratched. So let's see, the, the, the water from the watering can felt like a gentle rain on him. When Miss Jaster went into the house to have lunch, Hedgie went back to sleep, enjoying the most perfect dreams. Every day after that, Miss Jaster came with her watering can to sprinkle the flower bed and watch for green shoots. And every night, you know what a shoot is? It's a little bit of green that first comes up out of the seed. And every night, Hedgie wandered through the garden, sniffing and nibbling the way hedgehogs do. But after a while, he began feeling restless. Something was happening. He didn't know what. But deep down among his quills, something was stirring and squirming like a thousand tiny fingers tickling his skin. He was so itchy he couldn't sleep and so curious he had to know just what was wrong. Oh dear, I think you're gonna know what's wrong. So there she is, going back in the house and over here, what's going on? What's happening to Hedgie the Hedgehog? Can you see? Right there, something's growing. I think the seeds are sprouting. Down by the tool shed where Miss Jaster filled her watering can was a small puddle of clear water for the tap was worn and kept dripping. Hedgie used it as his mirror, and down to this mirror he went to have a look at himself. But when he leaned over the puddle, he stood quite still, curling and uncurling his toes in disbelief when he, what he saw in the water was not his ordinary gray-brown prickly self, but something quite different. Peeping out from among his quills were little spikes and shoots of green ready to climb and bloom and fill with bees and honey. Well, he said to himself, now I am either a flower bed or a vegetable garden. I wonder which. So here he is. I'm just going to show you this picture for now. Here's the tool shed. There's the puddle. There's the faucet where she fills her watering can. And he's using the puddle as a mirror and he sees something growing, but he doesn't know. Is he a vegetable plant? Is he vegetable plants or is he flowers? He doesn't know, but he knows something's happening. He's got some seeds in him, he knows that. When Miss Jaster came with her watering can that evening, Hedgie was back in his old spot and the whole flower bed was full of little spikes and shoots of green. So pleased was Miss Jaster to see this that she played the entire blue Danube waltz on her piano. I guess that's a fancy song she likes twice over before going to bed. So there's Hedgie back in the garden bed. See him right there. Let me put it real close. There he is, he blends right in. And there's Miss Jaster feeling cheerful and playing some music at the piano. He blends right in, he camouflages so well. Oh dear. What do you think, Nisa? But Hedgie was only half listening. Flower bed, whoops, did I skip a page? Yeah, nope. But Hedgie was only half listening. Flower bed or vegetable garden? Vegetable garden or flower bed? He kept saying to himself, which am I? I wonder, we know it's flower, I think, did we know it's flowers? I think, I think we do. Oh yeah, I think so. The fact was that during the day, he'd had the most alarming dreams. First, he dreamt that he was covered with tomato plants. One by one, the tomatoes ripened and dropped off the vine, squashing on his head ripping on his quills till he looked as if he were covered by tomato sauce. Then he dreamt that the vines changed. They grew longer and heavier and were covered with large yellow flowers and the flowers turned into huge ripe melons dragging behind Hedgie and growing till he could not move another step. 
At that moment, he woke up. All over him and around him were growing plants. If only he could be sure they were not tomatoes or melons. So this is a picture from his dream. He dreamt he had tomato plants. <laughs> he was a tomato plant. And here, maybe he's growing melons. <laughs> Early the next morning, he went down to the tool shed, nosing about till he found the seed packs. Hedgie pulled the packs out on the floor in front of him, marigold and baby's breath and fragrant sweet William. He did not know their names, but he did recognize the pictures on the packs. They were neither tomatoes nor melons. Much relieved, he went to have a look at himself in the puddle. puddle. I believe I shall be quite handsome, he said, and toddled off to bed. There he is, doing a little investigating of the, of the seed packets for clues. Not many days after this, Hedgie woke up early in the afternoon, feeling the presence of a strange new something that hadn't been there the day before. For a while, he lay quite still, wiggling his nose and sniffing. And when he opened his eye, when he opened his eyes, the flowers were all around him, marigolds and baby's breath and patches of sweet William. I'm in bloom, cried Hedgie. And he hurried down to the tool shed to look at himself. But no matter how long he looked or how hard he tried, he could find only one word to, to describe what he saw. Stupendous! And even that was not really the word he wanted. While he stood there in the sunshine, a small cloud of butterflies and bees gathered around him, fluttering and humming. Hedgie didn't mind. He was not afraid of bees. After all, a bee has only one stinger, he thought. But I have over 200. <laughs> And who ever heard of anyone being afraid of butterflies? But Hedgie wasn't really thinking of the hum and flutter around him. Something inside him was bursting to get out. The special something that makes birds sing and poets rhyme and puppy dogs chase their tails. So here's Hedgie blending right into the garden with all the flowers growing from his back. And here he is admiring himself in the puddle. Suddenly, his feet began doing little dance steps in the dust, all on their own. One moment, they looked as if they were waltzing. The next moment, they were doing a tap dance, then a skip, and then a jump, and a slow turn round the puddle. Oh, it cannot be helped, thought Hedgie, as he waltzed into the flower bed. I really shouldn't do this, he said, as he jumped over the marigolds. He's so happy and joyful, isn't he? But I absolutely must, he cried, as he burst onto the lawn, skipping and jumping and kicking his heels. Around the fish pond he raced, while behind him trailed the bees and butterflies like a noisy cloud of flower petals. Tomorrow I'll be as quiet as an earthworm, thought Hedgie, but not today. Today is the greatest day of my life. There'll never be another day like it. And the bees and the butterflies, tired of chasing their food around the lawn, hoped he was right. So there he is. He is just dancing. He feels so special and so happy with the garden of flowers growing out of his back, and he's just go, jumping all over the place, full of happiness. And the butterflies and bees chasing behind him, as butterflies and bees love flowers. Miss Jaster had been do dozing in her wicker chair when she saw, or believed she saw, a small patch of her flower bed jump onto the lawn and head for the gate. At first she thought it was a dream, but when she found that she was quite awake, she said the first thing that came into her head, she said the first thing that came into her head, stop thief, she called. And then at the top of her voice, stop thief. Oh dear, thought Hedgie, the flowers were indeed Miss Jaster's, not his. Taking them out of the flower bed, even if it was only to perform a midsummer dance around the fish pond, did make him kind of a thief. If only Miss Jaster had remained in her chair, Hedgie would have gone back to his place in the flower bed. But she jumped up, waved her parasol, and poor Hedgie, now quite frightened, dashed through the gate down the road to the village. In a small cloud of dust, many yards behind, came Miss Jaster, her knitting, her parasol, and her cries for help. Then up the road from the village came the police constable on his bicycle, making what speed he could uphill toward Miss Jaster, carrying a parcel to his sisters in Winsley. For Hedgie, there was only one thing left to do. He scurried in among the wild flowers at the roadside and lay still hoping he would not be seen. So she sees part of her garden running away. 
and thinks someone's stealing her flowers. I think that's what she thought. Then the police officer gets involved, and she's chasing Hedgie down the path. Oh, my word. This is getting wild. There she is. That's the chair she fell asleep in. There's her parasol. It's like an umbrella for sunny days. Keeps the sun off your face. And there's the constable. Other name for that is officer. And there's Hedgie being chased by Miss Jaster. Let's see if I can get that a little closer for you. There it is. She's chasing behind Hedgie. So he's very still in the garden now. He found some flowers and he's trying to camouflage. Half an hour later, Wimple the constable at last understood or believed he understood what happened. I quite understand, miss, he said, but one last question, please. Did you by any chance happen to notice how many legs these flowers had when they made their getaway? In round numbers. <laughs> A great many, constable, she said firmly. A great many. Wimple licked his pencil and added to his description of the fugitive. Legs. He wrote numerous. Very good, miss, he said. We'll have your zinnias back in no time. At all. Marigold, said Miss Jaster, and went into her garden. Of course, said Wimple, and moved off down the road. So he's taking the report from, the, from Miss Jaster, and he's like, wait, legs? What? <laughs> in the 16 years he had been in Sandgate-on-Sea, no one had ever reported a missing flower bed. Sometimes the children pick a few plums or apples that aren't exactly theirs, he thought, and sometimes, I suppose, they pick a few flowers that, strictly speaking, belong to someone else. But when flower beds start running off on their own, Wimple shook his head sadly. He tried to decide how he would begin. Put yourself in the fugitive's place, the chief constable always told him. Imagine you were running away. Where would you hide? Where would you hide if you were a hedgehog with a bunch of flowers growing out of your back from seeds? <laughs> There's the constable thinking it over, trying to figure out what the heck, where is that thief? If I were a flower, thought Wimple, a flower, he could imagine himself being a cabbage or a melon and for some reason even an artichoke. But a flower? He looked around him. Where would a flower? Of course, he said, slapping his hand against his helmet. That's where I should hide among the other flowers. He started down the road, poking among the weeds and wildflowers, looking for marigolds and baby's breath and a patch of sweet William. But it was nearly sunset, two days later, before he brought Hedgie back to Villa Pax on a leash. <laughs> so here he is looking around in the flowers for Hedgie. Never in his life had Hedgie felt so sad, so tired, and so hopelessly small. His feet were sore, his flowers had wilted. He was a weary, worried, be bedraggled little animal down on his luck. Goodness sake, said Miss Jaster, it's the hedgehog. So here's the constable bringing Hedgie back with a leash. And look how droopy his flowers are. And that's when the constable shows Miss Jaster. And, and she says, oh my goodness, it's the hedgehog. That whole time, poor little guy. Flower hogs more like it, said Wimple. But Miss Jaster had already gone into the house. She came back shortly with a saucer of milk. This time she took no chance, but knelt down right there on the garden steps and put the milk in front of Hedgie. She was quite sure this time, for she saw his eyes, like two tiny drops of India ink in the fur, and they were looking straight into her own. A little, little later, freed from the leash and fed and showered, Hedgie toddled back to his flower bed. The constable, having enjoyed a little homemade gooseberry wine and a friendly chat, returned to the village. Miss Jaster lit the lamp on the piano, but tonight her heart was not in the blue Danube waltz. She kept thinking of the friendly little flower hog and the frightful scare she must have given him. After a while, she turned off the lamp and sat looking into the garden till the moon rose behind the junipers. So there she is, really taking the time to notice which end of the hedgehog to leave the saucer of milk. What a nice lady. She's feeling a little badly. And there she is, thinking of how tired he must be. What a troubled day it had been for Hedgie. Early the next morning, Hedgie met Miss Jaster on the front steps. She was carrying a tray with her own breakfast and Hedgie's milk. That morning and many mornings after, they had breakfast together by the fish pond. 
Miss Jaster in her wicker chair, Pedgy in the grass. After a leisurely breakfast, they went for a walk along the beach, followed by a small but persistent <laughs> followed by a small but persistent butterfly. At the end of the breakwater, they sat down, Miss Jaster dangling her feet in the water, Hedgy resting his nose on his paws, and there was nothing but peace and sunshine and a touch of sweet William. So there they are, enjoying their milk in the mornings, their breakfast together. Right there. And where is he? He's right here with the flowers. And then here is when they go to sit. She dangles her feet in the water alongside him. And then on the last page is another picture of a map of the garden. There. So that is a book I read maybe a hundred times or more when I was a little girl. I loved N.M. Bodecker books um, and this book in particular, Miss Jaster's Garden. So that may have been the first time you've even read that book, I don't know. But it's just wonderful. The illustrations are wonderful, the story is wonderful. And I thought it, with all the planting and the gardens, it was an especially good book to read today because today is Earth Day. So happy Earth Day to all of you. Misa, anything you wanna add? Misa loves Earth Day. You're such a good kitty. Yes, you are, such a good kitty. I hope you have a wonderful Earth Day, everybody, and I will be back with another story very, very soon. I'm also going to be doing more crafts videos, craft videos. We're going to be doing one soon. Um, I'm going to teach you guys how to make friendship bracelets, so be on the lookout for that one, okay? Love you. Um, I miss you, and you are important to me. Take care.